let's explore the plot of Nimrod, a biblical character with a wide range full of nuances and intrigues. Nimrod is introduced in the Bible, specifically in the book of Genesis, as someone with a quite notable lineage. He was the son of Cush, who in turn was the son of Ham, and Ham was the son of Noah. Taking a deeper look at Nimrod, we discover that he was not just any character. He holds the title of being the first mighty on earth after the flood, which means he had notable strength and influence. He was not only robust in physical terms, but also in terms of power and control. Nimrod was not only a king, but the monarch of the land of Shinar, located in the region we now know as Mesopotamia. Things get even more interesting when we explore the traditions and tales that circulate around Nimrod outside of the Bible, especially in the Midrash, a collection of Jewish texts. Nimrod is linked to two great stories, the construction of the Tower of Babel, and a confrontation with Abraham, whom he even tried to murder according to some narratives. In the account of Genesis chapter 10, Nimrod was not only the son of Cush and grandson of Ham, but also the great-grandson of Noah, establishing himself as a prominent figure after the catastrophic event of the Great Flood. His kingdom began in Babel and expanded to other cities such as Iraq, Akkad, and Kalma, all of them in the land of Shinar. Later, it is said that Nimrod advanced to Assyria and built important cities there, such as Nineveh. The impact of Nimrod was felt not only in his leadership and in the cities he founded, but also in the practices that developed under his reign. The cities that Nimrod established were known for their practices of idolatry, sorcery, and rejection of God's laws. The inhabitants of these cities were known for their pagan and idolatrous practices. Delving further into the scriptures and what Bible scholars tell us, these cities were in the same region where the descendants of Cain, before the flood, established the first cities. Nimrod, moreover, is described as a mighty hunter before the Lord, which some interpret as a way of saying that he was in opposition to the Lord. After the flood, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers had created fertile plains, offering the ability to cultivate abundant grain harvests. But life there also presented significant challenges, such as the danger of wild animals threatening developing communities. Nimrod, being an experienced hunter and skilled leader, offered protection, gaining the esteem of the people of the time. Through his skill and power, he not only became an influential leader, but also a prominent figure in the traditions and accounts of the region. Nimrod, already established as an influential monarch and leader of the masses, weaves a narrative of advances and tragedies in the history of humanity. Under his scepter, cities like Babel, Iraq, Akkad, and Kalma, in the land of Shinar not only flourished, but were also the first to be mentioned in the scriptures, with Nimrod's kingdom being the first documented kingdom in the Bible. Although Nimrod's achievements in the cities under his rule could have been seen as positive progress, Nimrod's perspective towards God darkens this picture. The Bible tells us that beyond his prominence and power, he did not fear God. The word used to describe Nimrod as mighty, which comes from the Hebrew jiber, can also be interpreted as tyrant. In his own name, Nimrod, is commonly interpreted as synonymous with rebellion. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Nimrod was a provocateur who led the people to rebel against God. But Nimrod's adversity towards the divine goes even further. Not only did he oppose the true God, but he also practiced a form of dark and diabolical idolatry, participating in horrendous atrocities. For all these reasons, he is considered the first Antichrist. The plots thicken when we delve into Nimrod's personal life. He was married to a woman named Semiramis, who was elevated to the status of goddess by the Babylonians. The cult of Semiramis demanded extreme sacrifices. Those who wished to approach her and enjoy the privileges of her nation had to offer a newborn child. 
In addition, Semiramis requested a cult for Nimrod, known as the Cult of Moloch, where living children were sacrificed by throwing them into the fire. The story takes a turn when Nimrod, who had been a proponent of the construction of the Tower of Babel, is finally murdered. The tower, mentioned in Genesis chapter 11, was a project proposed by men to erect a structure whose top touched the sky. Flavius Josephus, a historian of antiquity, mentions in his work Jewish Antiquities, that Nimrod desired revenge against God. He vowed to build a tower so high that not even the waters of a second flood could reach it, as a way of avenging God for having destroyed his predecessors. According to Josephus, while the tower was built with the intention of protecting humanity from another flood, it is also crucial to recognize that the cause of the first flood was human wickedness and rebellion. Nimrod, in an act of rebellion against God similar to that of his antediluvian predecessors, persuaded his people to believe that they did not owe their strength and prosperity to God, but that they were the result of their own efforts and skills. However, the story of the Tower of Babel concludes with a sovereign demonstration of God's power. Construction was interrupted when God confused the languages of the people, making it impossible for them to communicate effectively to conclude their project. This divine act dispersed the people and frustrated their plans, putting a stop to their ambitions and their rebellion against the divine will. The dispersion of the people after the incident of the Tower of Babel evidence that contrary to Nimrod's perspective, human strength and capacity are gifts conferred by God, susceptible to being revoked at any moment. Nimrod, the mighty king and priest of Babylon, found death at the age of 215 years, according to legends. His remains were brutally mutilated, incinerated, and distributed in different areas, an act that finds echoes in certain biblical episodes such as those found in Judges 19.29 and 1 Samuel 11.7. With the absence of Nimrod, his wife, Semiramis, ascended to power, proclaiming her deceased husband as the solar god. When she later gave birth to an illegitimate son, she presented him to the people as Nimrod reborn, whom she named Tammud. Over time and generations, Babylon, the territory in which Babel was founded, became the cradle of Sumerian civilization, a society that emerged, surprisingly developed, in the region previously inhabited by the descendants of Cain. This sudden outbreak of civilization had advanced judicial systems, urban organization, written language, and knowledge in various disciplines. Babylon and the civilizations that prospered there, such as the Sumerian and later the Egyptian, have been identified in the course of history with a plethora of esoteric and malevolent practices, such as idolatry, divination, enchantments, evils, and various abominations. Intriguingly, Nimrod intertwines in the mythologies and legends of various ancient cultures, including the Hungarian, Greek, Arab, Syrian, and Armenian. There are indications that suggest that the Epic of Gilgamesh and the myth of Hercules can trace their origins back to the life of Nimrod. According to the Midrash, Nimrod pursued and tried to murder the patriarch Abraham, although the veracity of this is uncertain. The enigma of Nimrod and the shadow of his legacy looms, enduring through the centuries, inviting reflections and debates. The story, full of advances and atrocities, triggers questions and curiosities about the nature of power, rebellion, and spirituality. This journey through the annals of time and the pages of ancient history, especially around the figure of Nimrod, his achievements and his evils, and the development of civilizations after his death, invites us to ponder the complexities of human history and the eternal combat between the desire for power and morality. The intertwined narratives of development, rebellion, and divine punishment sculpt a story that has been transmitted throughout the centuries, providing both warnings and insights about human nature and the divine. 
The duality of Nimrod as a powerful leader and a rebel against the divine reflects the perpetual struggle of man between ambition and obedience to moral and spiritual laws. I hope this account has provided you with valuable information, and I invite you to share this enriching content with your loved ones, family and friends. Until next time, and may God bless you.